Hi everyone and welcome back to another Curious Business Talk episode. In this episode I'm joined by Aneta or UX Aneta and if you watch until the end you will find out some answers on the questions that were asked from my uh, Instagram followers and if you have any questions please leave them below and maybe either me or Aneta will answer them in the future. So get a drink, sit back and enjoy the episode. Hi Aneta! How are you? (laughs) Hello! (laughs) I'm doing good. Thank you so much. How about you? Good, good. Uh, The summer is almost over, but we still have some sunny days. How how is in Oslo? (laughs) As I told you before we we started, it's a bit uh, rainy today. So I would say even it's pouring, uh, literally. So we have quite dark... uh, uh atmosphere a bit miserable i'd say but it's uh, okay because yesterday it was really beautiful so yeah it's it's all about balance but you can also say that it's cozy weather right now yeah right but you know there are too many cozy days in norway in general so (laughs) yeah yeah i understand i understand here in 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 the winter zagreb gets really really dark and really really cloudy for periods of time so i completely understand why you would be sick of it but can you tell me what are you focusing on right now what are you doing in your career and what's happening with you how have you been in 2024 what's new (laughs) <laughs> That's a good question. Actually, I am a ver- in a very specific moment in my career. I don't know if you have seen my- on my Instagram, but mm-hmm. uh, I quit my corporate job uh, mm-hmm. recently. Uh, and it was because of some uh, uh, situations at work, uh, not very pleasant, I would say, for employees. So I quit mm-hmm. and basically... Uh, started to uh, I had to take a break so right now I am not looking for any full-time job uh, I might say I got a bit tired and all of the situation I had in this full-time job last position mm-hmm. uh, which was uh, yeah I can say it it was basically mobbing uh, from my manager so uh, it uh, like made like a very negative impact on myself and mm-hmm. on my how I feel and how I feel about working in a corporate so i mm-hmm. um, Yeah, so I decided to take a break from this for a while. And Mm -hmm. right now I am focusing mostly on uh, content creation and working my course about UX portfolios, as you probably can guess. It uh, uh, takes a lot of time Uh, and I plan to take probably some freelance clients soon, but I'm postponing this a bit. Uh, and trying to focus on this cause so this is uh, my current state (laughs) nice nice I have uh, seen you before on Instagram talking about burnout and how important it is to take breaks and how you talk about so many topics but most most of it that stuck with me it was the burnout phase that you also managed to fight And it's, I'm so sorry to hear that in you got this experience and, but I'm also happy for you because you got back to yourself and like choosing yourself and doing what you like now, content creation and because you're killing it all the time. I'm like, oh, oh my God, there is another no. movie. There is another no. movie now. But no, I my Instagram. Yes. Yeah, yeah yes. go on, Sarah. Don't you say <laughs> Uh, my Instagram is not performing super well, but I'm doing my best. It's uh, okay, maybe not my best. I could probably do better, but it's like you know how it is with content creation. It's ups and downs, and you yeah. need to find energy and time and inspiration for doing this. So it's uh, yeah, it's also like a long term process, marathon, like people say. So yeah, yeah, and I understand where, where you're coming from for the energy inspiration part because. Something happened, I think, in the past two years where the algorithm changed so much that it affected big and small accounts. It just became so hectic that it's continuing to make us confused with every single update. And it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's true. And also, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of dry. Right now, I must say on Instagram, I'm not so sure which vi- of my videos could perform better. Uh, mm-hmm. Whereas before, I could kind of predict this a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I 
I have some assumptions, uh, and but it, they work a bit better on LinkedIn these days than on Instagram for me. Yeah, LinkedIn is kind mm. of raising the bar for content creation, and I kind of yeah, like absolutely. it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and one of my questions was related to your UX Design Express, which is a masterpiece of a newsletter, I would say. And I'm like, where does she get her 24 hours? Because doing this is just like so much work. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, this is free. But I want to ask you, uh, how did you come up with this uh, side quest or idea mm-hmm. for the newsletter? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, it came to me naturally. I mean, I always, I have always wanted to create a newsletter because we both know how it is with uh, short form content and social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't own those platforms. That's first and foremost. And uh, secondly, is that uh, I wanted to create a longer format as well mm-hmm. to try it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to create a long form content. That's the first. And the second is that I wanted to create my own space that it's not on uh it's that it's not owned by uh you know a third uh, two party so uh this is my own place and the topic came naturally from my coaching sessions and also that I do work or prepare this uh, portfolio course mm-hmm. uh, for designers so I thought this is very natural to write about this uh, and I write more like in depth tips there uh so and it's free, so everyone is, of course, invited <laughs> to check it out. Yes. Uh, and initially, it took me a lot of time to write one issue, like literally, mm-hmm. because it was my first time I started writing long-form content. And as mm-hmm. you know it yourself, I'm also not a writer like by nature. It's like a skill you also need to gain yeah. and practice, right? Mm-hmm. So when I started the newsletter first time, it was um, very time consuming. I was mm-hmm. like, even, oh, Jesus, this takes too much time, too many <laughs> hours. Why I write, you know, because I was overthinking. I was like, oh, I, I just know how to write it. This is too long. Mm-hmm. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Right now, it takes a bit of less time, uh, but it's still, uh, yeah, it's still time consuming. Yeah, I, I I bet it is because you have now like, the system, you have the habit, you know yes. what goes where and how long it takes. And you're like, okay, trust the process. Maybe they will like this one. Maybe I w- should include something more and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I stalked you on LinkedIn and I remember <laughs> also mentioning on uh, social media that you worked uh, as an architect in Japan and mm-hmm. I think Poland. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about your background back then and what did you like the most? An additional question that is not included in the script, but mm-hmm. what do you think for the architect clients was the most important thing? Yeah. Okay, so let me answer for the first question first. Uh, yes. So I am Polish. I grew up in Poland, and that's why my where my career uh, started. Mm-hmm. And I studied architecture. Uh, it took me five and a half years uh, to finish master degree because it was both bachelor and master. Mm-hmm. So I am an engineer architect. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, 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 but I also studied uh, graphic design. So I finished mm-hmm. those two faculties. Uh, but of course, I started naturally with uh, finding work in architecture from mm-hmm. like first years at the university, mm-hmm. taking on some internships and then some like paid gigs and uh, some like not uh, full time positions, but more like, I don't know, working Three times per uh, three days per week, or mm-hmm. and then it of course it was longer, and then uh, I got an opportunity to uh, go to Japan, and uh, it was for an internship. Then we got uh, with my current husband, we got uh, um, we got a job in uh, in one uh, in a very famous uh, Japanese architecture ca- company, Kengo Kuma. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's an architect, ninety nine percent do know <clears throat> this person. Uh, it was a huge office, also a huge experience for us, uh, mm-hmm. for me. <clears throat> and uh, the problem with uh, living and where maybe not living but working in Japan was that it would just. Uh, didn't uh, give us a lot of free time. <laughs> mm-hmm. They work. Uh, <clears throat> yes, because we had uh, we worked uh, six days per week. Mm-hmm. 
from Monday to Saturday and it was not like nine to five or eight mm-hmm. to four or whatever. It was like we were coming around nine or 10 a.m. and then leaving like around 11 or midnight time. Yep. Yeah, uh, I I still remember having meetings with our boss at eleven thirty when I was showing him some architecture concepts, and it was just like insane for me. Oh and uh, the hilarious part is that after this, we even were going to like to drink, you know, with friends, yep. with colleagues, which mm-hmm. is also very common there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we didn't do it actually quite often because I was so tired all the time so so yeah but uh, architecture is uh, my husband is still an architect <laughs> <laughs> so I am still connected somehow to this topic and mm-hmm. I sometimes I got this question quite often so yeah. I am mentally as well connected and I sometimes think like oh should I maybe design something mm-hmm. like right now you know mm-hmm. because it was, it's been a while so we were like kind of okay it would be cool yeah the problem with architecture was that uh, I didn't like uh, working I think in those architectural offices mm. I think like after six years in design so after six years six years uh, ago I changed my uh, the career mm-hmm. I realized that it was not about the topic in general architecture because mm-hmm. I really like like this the, like you know observing how buildings look like in different cities how uh, the culture impacts the, how the buildings looks like look like because I was an architect of buildings I didn't design interior design I see um so it wasn't the topic apparently I think as I reflect on this right now it was mm-hmm. more about uh, working in an office uh very low salaries in mm-hmm. both countries Poland and Japan and yep. also uh spread ownership and I think the same problems came uh, up uh, for me in a corporate mm-hmm. to be honest mm-hmm. uh, not of course about the money this this uh, in the tech has never been a problem but in architecture it was yeah uh, and I also didn't like to spend so much time on drawing you know yeah I spent a lot of time drawing technical drawings of buildings uh, figuring out the details how the window will be uh, mm-hmm. put in this wall and yeah and it's it's yeah I I think I was like oh no it's it's probably I can't imagine myself running like a business out of architecture yeah right now when I reflect on this I could probably do it right now in like you just probably need to be creative and kind of think what part of this professional life Mm -hmm. because the uh, profession is one way like design architecture right yeah and And another thing you can pick just little part of it that you you can yours Exactly. And another mm-hmm. thing is that you can pick the part of this topic, but also mm-hmm. you can put it in a different work environment. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily, like in design, right? You don't mm-hmm. necessarily need to work in the corporate, not necessarily need to work in a startup. Mm-hmm. And those uh, work environments, I think, make the biggest impact on how, at least I, uh, I've been feeling in my career, both architecture and design. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you ask another question, and of course, I forgot so you need to repeat <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, I was thinking about what was the most important thing for the client back then what mm. what was your observation back then as an architect what 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 they value the most uh so since I was designing mostly buildings for like uh large uh, objects not mm-hmm. like uh, uh family houses Mm. So my clients were mostly like uh, investors with like, you know, uh, um, like quite amount of money that yeah. they are try- trying to the businesses. Right. So they mm-hmm. were trying to make money out of those buildings, like of multifamily, course. multifamily buildings, but also offices. I don't know all other stuff that I, I designed. Mm hmm. So, of course, uh, the key uh, value for them was to get the most amount of money from every square meter. Ah, mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, that's why probably you can, I'm not so sure if this is the same in your country, but in Poland, it was the same. Japan and every country I designed buildings for. And in Norway, it's the same. Uh, You basically squeeze number of square meters in the building so that uh, investor, this business can earn more money on this because Mm -hmm. every client pays for a square meter, right? Mm -hmm. So the more... Uh, yeah, the more usable uh, square meters you have, the, the more money the business earns. 
So that was the key. And it, of course, uh, many times it was quite problematic and it is mm -hmm. like, uh, it's like one of the biggest challenges for architects because sometimes you end up uh, having like very quirky, weird plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I know that some, uh, architecture offices and people are like okay whatever I mean like I'm trying my best but the business is so pushy and I just do yeah. whatever yeah and that's why then if you want to for instance buy an apartment you see those weird very long rooms or uh, bedrooms uh, or you know corridors. Uh, yeah. exactly so so yeah, uh, I must say I was uh, in Kengo Kuma. It was I didn't design multifamily buildings. It was more in those Polish offices that mm -hmm. I designed multifamily buildings. But in Kengo Kuma, it was more like I designed. I don't know. Uh, we designed like a, a multifunctional building with offices and mm -hmm. some hotels in Sydney. Mm -hmm. So it was different countries as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I think this money is always the case for them. It would be different if uh, it was more about uh, single family houses, right? Mm -hmm. Like personal, individual mm -hmm. client mm -hmm. that really cares about economy and how this building will be functioning for them as a family, as a yes. couple, right? Yes. And the then it exactly then that the, the of course they every client usually cares about the money. This is just the the case uh, mm -hmm. but I think the conversation looks a bit different with those individual clients than with businesses I see uh, do you have in mind um, designing designing or um, drawing a house for yourself or someone from your family ask you about oh can you give me a hand with this plan <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good question love it actually yes we had uh, many times requests from uh, our families or mm -hmm. friends uh, we were cons uh, sometimes consult our friends who are about to buy an apartment or a house. Uh, uh, so yeah, we did it. Uh, anyway, when it comes to my own house, yes, that's definitely my dream. Uh, and mm -hmm. actually, recently, I was also thinking about this, that it would be a good moment to design my own house because I had like a fr like a break from architecture. So yeah. I'm, you know, so <laughs> then you're coming more excited to do mm -hmm. it. But yeah, it's uh, still on the list uh, and currently uh, we're renting an apartment in Oslo mm -hmm. and we still don't know if we want to stay in Norway. So, you know, it's, uh, life is like this. But uh, yes, that's, uh, that's definitely a dream on my list to design my own house. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That would be amazing. I would love to have another episode just for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How you're going to design the house. And because you have the user experience mindset now, I bet yes. it would be an amazing house. So <laughs> maybe another coffee chat for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. It's also another problem with this. When you design something for yourself, mm -hmm. like I work on my own course right now, I can yeah. see that this is probably the biggest and most uh, difficult project <laughs> ever, ever, <laughs> ever. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you just have to make the MVP and then yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to build on it. So think about it version one for the course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the house, that's a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true that's yeah. true <clears throat> the next question was about uh, if you're a tactile learner like do you mm -hmm. touch in order to <clears throat> learn do you play with materials in order to create something now I know that you're in the uh, UX design at the moment but what that was that the case in architecture did you have to also go to places <clears throat> and see the materials and yeah mm. Yeah, good question. Yes, absolutely. When uh, I worked as an architect, as uh, even if I didn't design interior design so often, mm -hmm. uh, we still, uh, I still had to visit the plot. For instance, uh, do like uh, ethnography research in a sense and see how everything looks like on this plot. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, what is the surrounding? If there are some old buildings on the plot and all of those things. Uh, and when it comes to touching materials. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, we uh, definitely always ordered some samples of mm -hmm. some uh, bricks or anything, like even parts of the window, anything that you wanted to put on the elevation, uh, you had to uh, see it and check it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, usually in architectural offices, you have like a whole like, you know, shelves with uh, samples of samples, different materials. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, of different materials. Uh, so that was uh, always okay. And to be honest, 
till now, until now, I whenever we travel, I like mm -hmm. when I see a building and there's like a very specific texture on the elevation or on the wall, I like to touch it. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, you know, to your husband or your friend, you know what, this material is this and this, and this color yeah. is this and this. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like this feeling that you want to kind of like, yeah, it, 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 this is something you can't do in the UX design, right? So, yeah, yeah I, I, I really like uh, this part of architecture, yeah. And also now I had a flashback from your Instagram stories. You went on a trip, but I don't remember where. It might be Asia, but I'm not sure. And you were mm -hmm. talking about the user experience on the airport and around uh, yeah. the airport. And it was so funny. I'm like... Uh, it was so uh, relatable because I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy then. It, it's absolutely <laughs> normal to be like thinking about the buttons and everything, how it looks and why they show up this message right now, but not later. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I had this series. I haven't done it for a while, but I had this series where I was, uh, yeah, I was uh, traveling and then whenever I traveled somewhere, I was showing and uh, analyzing some uh, mm -hmm. local uh, user experiences from uh, yes buying tickets was a, a common one for many places yeah. but it was like airport experiences as well also like service design sometimes even mm -hmm. so so yeah yeah it was quite cool actually I really like this bring back the series <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Yes, I really like them. Your stories are like so interesting to watch. And I'm like, okay, let's see what's next. What's happening today? <laughs> um, you also mentioned in one of uh, your newsletter issues uh, about how to tell a story. And mm -hmm. God, how did you came up with the idea about the um, producers, I think, film directors and how they tell a story? That was such an interesting read. And I was like... Ah wow i know what you're talking about you're probably referring to this um story mapping yes yes. yeah and this uh, yeah okay yeah so you know uh it you know that it came from content creation mm -hmm. i i follow and observe and also read a lot of newsletters about writing mm -hmm. but mostly writing that uh, connected with content creation so okay. uh uh, creators who create the, the, this content about writing target mm. content creators mm. uh, also who create content on social media or uh, create digital products and so yeah. on and it just came from this there are a lot of inspirations from this part you know and I have those uh, resources and uh, I remember reading about this in one uh, article mm -hmm. and that's why I that's how I found this mapping mm. Uh, mm -hmm. and in movies and when and I I even use it uh, also myself when I create some stories I like to draw and kind of do like I, you can call it like a map a mind map even sometimes but mm -hmm. exactly like draw I can see with labels and see how it uh, looks like it works mm -hmm. for me pretty good especially when I start and for also for case studies mm -hmm. it, it's it's something to test for everyone of course everyone is different uh, but I like to map it out a bit and then uh right uh, after this this map so yeah the map was very interesting and I thought oh this would be cool to share with my audience they might get some yeah. right they might get something from this so yeah, yeah. that's how it came to me it, it, okay oh, you have so many ideas obviously how do, <laughs> how do you keep up on writing them down or I don't know putting them in some kind of form audio video or written Exec like planning and then executing what is your process on generating some output of those all ideas that you get all day every day how does that yeah. work for you I love the question uh okay so it depends for instance when it comes to design mm -hmm. uh, uh it's probably like every designer does I assume most of us it's like when you see something you kind of, uh, you know, see, uh, take a picture, take a screenshot, mm -hmm. save it. Mm -hmm. I have folders in Google Drive on my iPhone as well. And I have like a database with some design patterns in Notion. Okay. So this is about design. Uh, 
when it comes to content creation, my ideas, I of course have a database in Notion where I like plan it out, but I am yeah. like, I like changing. So, and exactly my ideas evolve. I'm not so sure if you have the same, but when I start working on a topic, it's that everything involves so much. And it is the same with the newsletter. That's why sometimes it takes me too much time because I am, oh, yeah. I thought about this. And right now I'm thinking about that. So I yeah. need to change it. Or, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Uh, so I have this list in Notion. I change it. Uh, I collect uh, also links to some resources mm -hmm. in another database in Notion. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I also, when I, for instance, read books, I use this uh, tool called Readwise. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah this was streetwise let me check on my phone it was streetwise so basically uh it saved um oh yeah it readwise so it con uh it uh, links your kindle mm -hmm. uh with it can with uh, many probably different tools i'm not so sure but i'm using notion so for instance mm -hmm. it links if you highlight in kindle in your in a book you're, okay. uh, you're, you're reading something yeah it uh uh, it uh, sends this uh, quote to your no Notion database. Oh my God, I see what you did there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and that's how you can create, like, you call it second brain with your, like, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. books quote. And based on this, you can also write something. Uh, I had a moment when I was doing a lot of notes from books. Right now, I must say, I don't do it because it's like priority. I create too much content and uh, <laughs> it's very energy consuming and draining. So I yeah. had to, yeah, I had to stop it for this, this time uh, being. But before mm -hmm. I was doing, I was doing, using this read. I still mm -hmm. use it so it still links to my notion database but based on this I was also writing my thoughts about some parts of books yeah. and this was also part of the inspiration from my content for instance mm -hmm. absolutely I mean as a creator you get inspiration from everything so I don't absolutely I don't Abs uh, mm. so you would just say that you do all that but the most important part to get the product out is you execute and check those databases you check yes. those saved folders how do you get yourself to open that and be like let me do it and actually doing it without being like yeah <laughs> Love the question. So, uh, as you can see, uh, it's not uh, that I am ideal or super talented or super like productive. Mm -hmm. uh, I also fail a lot. So I will start from the failure. Yeah. Uh, right now, as you know, I've been working on my course uh, and I started uh, even like thinking about and researching this topic last August. So mm -hmm. it's one year, of course. Yeah. I haven't worked on this for one year. This is, of course, also a lie because I had a couple of months break. And to be honest, I've been like writing my course guides since the mid of June. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like one and a half month, two months, mm -hmm. kind of. So right now I can literally say that I am into this, but it takes me uh, a lot of time and it's very slow for me because yeah. so that's, so my execution right now is kind of slow, but in general, execution mm -hmm. is my strength. You oh, know, I did, okay. um, uh, I did this, uh, two tests. There is this personal test and uh, talent tests, like yeah. strength test, Gallup test. Gallup. You heard about it? Gallup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh g a l l u p mm -hmm. uh and there uh i did this when i was actually transitioning to design you know uh -huh. and i remember because i did it on the first of january <laughs> <laughs> oh um, yeah and uh, you have you found it uh i think so but later we will find it yes. yeah uh and basically uh my strength of course it shows you different talents, like your five, uh, first, my five fast talent, first five talents are futuristic. Discipline is the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically when it comes to the theme of my strengths is mm -hmm. execution, mm -hmm. executing. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it, in a sense, I, I motivate myself 
in a sense naturally mm-hmm. uh, but it doesn't mean that it's oh it's so easy and everything yeah. is super like pleasant yeah. and I yeah. am like super happy and like well it's such a comfort mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. to work and execute no absolutely not yeah uh, but I plan and uh, sometimes the plan uh, doesn't work mm-hmm. sometimes I am like mm, I'm not doing this and mm-hmm. I do something else Mm-hmm. Uh, but I try to do something every day for like I plan every day I have my to-do list I have my project planned uh, and this is how it looks like uh, generally so that's how I execute but as I told you with my own projects like this course yeah. uh, it's not ideal I must say I would love to do it quicker but I mm-hmm. really want to give as much value as possible mm-hmm. so uh, so it takes quite a bit of time for me uh, I know that people recommend deadlines and Pomodoro techniques and other crap. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's for me, it's, I use, I block time. I have my focus time. I had mm-hmm. to learn how to focus as well. I had some problems with concentration for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that because of the corporate and how this uh, corporate works, because you have those cheese days when you have meeting, a bit of time, meeting a bit of time. So your yeah. concentration just drops. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, it took me a while to kind of uh, go back to like f- being focused for mm-hmm. like one hour, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So of course I use it, but the deadline for me, um, my personal project, they don't work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just try to, I just try to work on this and not put uh, so much pressure on myself, but uh, maybe I will tell you more, I don't know, in one month or so, <laughs> yeah. if I change or find any techniques to speed it up. <laughs> well, if you want to uh, excel faster, I, what I would do, because I am really good at the brainstorming, the ideas, generating yeah. the ideas, but when it comes to the execution, I prioritize so many other things than the actual thing. And Okay. The execution for me, probably the test will tell that is not the the actual <laughs> strength, but it's somewhere there. But I would do, for example, find a partner who I it can help me with the focusing yeah. and working on my thing. If they also do something personal or a private project to work together. I also mm. used, um, not last winter, but the winter before, Focusmate. Basically, yeah, accountable. Yeah, I, I, I saw it. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. It. I was thinking about you know joining those sessions. I was thinking this works. You should. It works. It oh, works. really? It works. You just have to open one tab or the tabs that you are working yeah, on. Yeah. Turn on the camera and just in quiet or with the mic on. Also, you can just do your thing and you you would be surprised how fast uh, it passed. Like twenty thirty minutes, you actually work. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. Interesting. Uh, that part and also maybe bringing somebody to revise is your your course and maybe say, okay, yeah. this is enough. You should stop like dwelling on this part. Someone who already done a course, maybe that would be the best. Yeah. And then just have the green line to continue to do the second phase or third phase or which phase yeah. you have gone. Yeah. I That's don't know. Good idea. Yeah, I was thinking about those things honestly. I, I have, I have, for instance, like meeting with friends, but uh, mm-hmm. like I have a one friend I'm actually meeting today, mm-hmm. like an accountability buddy in a sense, yes. but she doesn't work on something similar. So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's uh, not this, but maybe this focus made. But yeah, I don't. I sit and work, so it's not this. It's more about saying, "Oh, okay, Anata, okay, stop writing. Yeah. You, it's enough." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I mean, you maybe you need a mentor yourself. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. If we are to ask three of your friends, what is Anita like? What do you think they would say about you? Oh, that's a good question. Maybe we. I forgot it was. It was on the script. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Okay, so I think, uh, of course, I asked those things to some of my close people because mm-hmm. it's uh, also a good way of uh, getting to know yourself. So, yeah, good check. Uh, like, like, do, do this user interview tell me what do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what my my strengths and all of this. Anyway, um, yeah. first of all, I think they usually say that I am a very organized person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think this is connected with this talent that I have on the second uh, uh, point in my Gallup test, which is mm-hmm. discipline. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so no surprise here, but it doesn't mean I organize everything and all of this, you know, it's like, but it's like very quite natural for me. I like mm -hmm. the structure. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, something they say quite often, especially if you would ask my husband, uh, mm -hmm. And he would probably tell you, oh, yeah, this is uh, this girl. He always organizes our trips and all of this. Okay, okay, okay. And our life and all of this. So, yes, yeah, so this is probably the first thing you ask about the three. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah. This is the first, second. You can also think of three different friends that you have because you yeah, are yeah. them. So, what? Yeah. They yeah, I think uh, the second is that. I think uh, oftentimes they say that I'm quite passionate in a sense that when I work on something uh, or we do something together, it's like I I I go into it like mm. in full mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which has its pros and cons, as of you course. probably know. Yeah. Uh, another thing, um, I don't know. I think that I'm um, I like have. Uh, fun and I also I'm a quite funny person especially in my mother tongue <laughs> no but in English it's also fun <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so yes I think this I'm pretty chilled and I am quite respectful so this is probably the third that uh, they usually say I'm not so sure what else okay that's nice that's nice I have heard one of my friends saying that in the organizing organizer trait like you have to schedule a meeting with her so you to meet her and i'm like well i mean it depends not for me fully but i have also a lot of friends who are organized or work mm -hmm. in a corporate so mm -hmm. they are taught to be yeah. organized um um but, but do I, you... I don't know hmm? Does it happen for you, someone to say like, oh, let's get, go out tonight? And you're like, yeah, sure. Like, is it possible? Yeah, absolutely. It's possible for me. We have uh, uh, quite close Polish friends here that we mm -hmm. meet, uh, met on site in Oslo, actually, uh, mm -hmm. by accident. And they do it with us sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we do it with them as well. Like, oh, we are around. Uh, should we grab a coffee together or something? Yeah. And this, is, this happens naturally. So, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You can do it with me. But sometimes... I have some meetings or commitments or I'm out of the city or something. So then exactly. it's not possible. But I have also a few friends who schedule a meeting with me as in a sense that not like sending me a calendar invite, but kind of should we meet on Tuesday or maybe Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Like, because they are also thinking if this is the best time for them. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think it's also because we're getting a bit older in a sense. So yeah, that's probably yeah. also why. <laughs> Do, don't get me wrong. I love scheduling meetings with my friends. I have chunks this big in my calendar, like just meeting my friend, just going yeah. out for coffee and cake. So this, I think it also motivates me to be like, okay, let's get these things done and then go. Yeah, 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 exactly. Unless we talk about something remote, because I also, I have a lot of friends living of in course. different countries. Yeah. So then it's more like, okay should we chat today and we have like we send each other invite to a car because it's very natural because you yeah. would like meet on google meet or somewhere so yeah yeah and time zones and everything yeah. so it yeah. makes sense i cannot pronounce your last name but google it translate said that it's a small town where are you coming from <laughs> okay so my um I'm not so sure if in Pol in norway it's a case actually that your surname can represent like some uh like natural place or something like this mm -hmm. um, but my surname uh, the, so I grew up in my mother's place in a mm -hmm. sense this, this the area she uh, she comes from so mm -hmm. but my uh, my surname it comes from the south of Poland and I grew up in the center of Poland so probably Google uh, yeah probably won't tell you the uh, the truth uh, mm -hmm. Uh, but I, yes, I grew up in the countryside. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, so there is the capital city in Poland that you know is Warsaw, and mm -hmm. there is another city called Łódź, which is like two hours from Warsaw by mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. And then my parents leave, and I grew up in the same place where they are still, uh, which is like I don't know one hour about uh, from uh, this uh which from this another city okay okay uh, so yeah. yeah so this is and this is center of poland the flat part uh the most uh, probably the uh not the best uh, location if we talk about war or something like this because mm -hmm. it's like you, you go easily left right <laughs> on this flat area <laughs> 
<laughs> when uh, it ended, it's ha- it's how it happened, right? Uh, looking at the history, <laughs> mm-hmm. I I haven't been to Poland, and I honestly don't know much about y- your history, but I take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, and I just wanted to ask: um, Did it happen that you moved from Poland uh, because of um, the natural events like the work and the internships, and then meeting mm-hmm. your husband? Because Poland is quite advanced when it comes to IT and mm-hmm. other opportunities have you ever thought of uh, moving back to Poland yeah yeah, yeah, yeah good question so uh, Japan for instance came naturally uh, mm-hmm. when uh, like internship and you always want to also learn uh, how other work environments look like how other yeah. cultures work uh, and moving to Norway was just natural part for us be- because uh, we always liked being somewhere in new places and mm-hmm. to change yeah and uh exploring and norway uh, came naturally because my husband uh, when he was a kid he was coming to norway with his parents mm. and his parents were coming here to pick strawberries as all those people in the communism <laughs> oh, uh, com- coming to a better country for a summer short term um, mm-hmm. uh, gig and uh, he was w- coming with them as a kid uh, so he remembered uh, norway as a very summery beautiful country mm-hmm. uh, of course this is the summer vibe is something different than living here for a full like yeah in the city and all of this yeah uh, so it's it was natural but yeah that's the truth Poland has uh, been uh, developing pretty rapidly I'd say um, mm-hmm. I always say it to my friends or other people even my Polish friends who complain about being in Poland and yeah. the politics and all of this yeah uh, because if they I, f- I think that when you move abroad and you live in different countries, it opens your mind and mm-hmm. it opens your perspectives. And Absolutely. I think that's why I appreciate me being abroad. I'm mm-hmm. not saying it will be forever. I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I think it's a huge benefit and everyone, in a sense, should try it out, I think, because it really opens the mind. I have a lot of friends being still in Poland and like always being in Poland. And yeah. sometimes uh, even among my family, I can see how conversations and uh, different views are built and they're yeah. definitely different than mine <laughs> mm-hmm. i don't, don't want to go into details but you probably yeah. can guess what i'm talking about yes i know um, even without you saying any more you know i absolutely yeah. understand yeah yeah uh, so yeah, but the tech scene in Poland is much better than in Norway. I always, mm-hmm. I am uh, always quite proud when, uh, uh, when I see like uh, how some uh, Polish people uh, succeed in tech on the tech scene mm-hmm. and how Polish uh, or even international companies invest in uh, opening offices in Poland. This is not yeah. the case for Norway. Norway is a very close country, the uh, economically as well. They very protect their uh, market very much. They mm-hmm. also also are not uh, in European Union, even though that they're in Schengen, they're not in European Union, oh, right? So okay. uh, it's also harder to get into this market for some uh, other con- um, uh, businesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there are more local brands on, in Norway, for instance. And uh, mm-hmm. that's why there are not so many. In a sense, there are many opportunities in tech in Norway, but not as many. And the maturity and level of design and tech scene in Norway, from at just my own perspective and experience, yeah. Of course. of course, after four years living here, uh, I think that in Poland it was better. Mm-hmm. And now on the topic of moving abroad, can you tell me and can you remember the biggest cultural shocks that you experienced when you moved? Yeah, you mean Norway or Japan? <laughs> you can say both, both. Whatever comes to mind, like work-wise, yeah. life-wise, like yeah. user experience-wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love, love it. I love the question. Uh, Japan, and you can probably guess. I'm European. Everything? I am. Yeah. So there are a lot of things. It's just so contrasting to where I grew mm-hmm. up and uh, the mindset of my parents, my family, the culture I grew up in. Yeah. Uh, there's everything. I one thing that I really appreciate in the uh, Japanese. Uh, culture and people is that they are very kind and Mm -hmm. uh, very like polite Mm -hmm. uh, which I really really always appreciate they're very helpful um, Mm -hmm. and uh, really try to help uh, people if you get lost in Japan or if you have like you know although there of course the work culture has a lot of 
uh, columns uh, yeah. and uh, this uh, aging society uh, mm-hmm. and uh, all people who are from a different generation than we are mm-hmm. uh, they are still on some uh, high positions uh, and this also caused some problems also women equality in japan is such a difficult topic and huge yeah. so that's definitely a lot of things but i really appreciate how deep their culture is how many mm-hmm. traditions they have mm-hmm. how many uh, contrasting even things they have uh, like uh, this minimalistic design uh, versus those you know uh, f- uh, very complex and um, Lattered a bit websites, right? Those, yes, uh, yes. A, a different. Uh, these are the differences within the culture, right? So mm-hmm. you can compare a lot of things, but they also have a lot of interesting architecture. I love the wooden architecture. That's why uh, we worked yeah. for Kengo Kuma because mm-hmm. he's quite famous for this, and I really love the details. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of things that are. And of course, I love the food. Yeah, of course, the food. Uh, but I had a problem in Japan when we lived there. I really missed uh, bread. Mm. and uh, or the uh, dairy product so yogurts and all of the, they don't eat it so much so it was like oh. and the bread is more like toast bread you know yeah uh, so it's... it's not the same bread as uh, I used to eat in Poland for instance you know oh now when you say that I I know what you're talking about because a friend of mine online friend that I was trying to learn Japanese that was a phase of oh, course oh that's so cool <laughs> yeah yeah and he was like oh you're from bulgaria we have your uh, yogurt here bulgarian Mm -hmm. yogurt and i was like you have that there and he showed me a picture and he tried it out and it's true it's not very common for them to eat something like this since it's fermented they love anything fermented so that's yeah 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 (laughs) Yeah, they have those yeah they have those famous beans uh natto uh but i hate it (laughs) yeah i haven't tried it but just by the looks of it i'm like "Uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh But also, um, one of the um, PewDiePie, a gamer, streamer, YouTuber, mm-hmm. he moved there completely with his wife and they have a baby there. And yeah. she was buying a bread maker. And I'm like, why would you buy bread maker in Japan when you have like so much food? But now when you say that, it makes sense that they're not so on, on the bread, you know, like... No. Uh, no, it's from a different flower and uh, this mo- it's more toast, toast kind of like mm-hmm. uh, pu- puffy you know fluffy puffy, bread fluffy, yeah, um, yeah. more like a dessert uh, kind of yeah yeah so it's not something i i really like bread i grew up in uh, you know in poland so mm-hmm. it's uh, that it's my uh, <laughs> yeah it's like a real like heavy bread on sour and it's uh, uh you for instance for breakfast you often eat uh, sandwiches which was not the case when we moved to japan <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but i really appreciate it when i could buy good food even in 7-eleven for lunch mm-hmm. and uh, there were they had so many different restaurants and um, yeah this was really cool uh, yeah. so I really I, I actually was chatting with my friend yesterday on a coffee yeah uh, that uh, actually maybe we should go back to Japan for like a camper trip around whole Japan because oh of course God. I visited many places yeah. but we didn't do like a car camper van trip so oh, it would be okay. yes or just wait for but when it comes to Norway Mm-hmm. Initially, when we moved, I thought that uh, it shouldn't be that different. I mm-hmm. mean, like Poland and Norway, it's not that far. I mean, it's it still is, but it's not like uh, mm-hmm. Poland and Japan, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, with Japan, it was quite obvious what you uh, what like can expect, and it's like this is so contrasting. Yeah. Uh, but with Norway, it, it's really these are those small details that make this, the difference. And uh, Scandinavia is really a different country compared to Slavic countries. Yes. Um, so in Slavic countries, you are very direct in communication, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, in Japan, it's also not the case being super direct. Yeah, <laughs> but it yeah. was expected. It was expected by me that they are not, uh, you know. Whereas in uh, with Norwegian, it was mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't. I mean, so when we moved here, uh, I got a few comments, some uh, from uh, my manager, previous manager, for instance, that mm-hmm. oh, you're too direct. You're creating a negative atmosphere. <laughs> what? So I. 
Uh, yeah, I think it's very natural. I I had to learn how to communicate better mm -hmm. and don't be so like direct. Uh, and I don't communicate like this anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. make this work. And actually, I learned about this a bit in Japan. But in Japan, it was kind of natural for me to like mm -hmm. be like this a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but here it was like I thought, okay. Uh, so this was the difference. Uh, mm -hmm. No, we are in Poland. We are much more transparent with our thoughts. Uh, so yes. we. Uh, Yes, compared to Norway, who are more diplomatic uh, mm -hmm. and uh, often can think one thing and don't say it to you. Yeah. Uh, maybe in a, in a sense of respect, but also that they are more like naturally diplomatic. They don't maybe like conflicts or something like exactly. this. So this was a, a difference. Another one was that um, uh, they have very limited number of products and services, mm -hmm. uh, which was quite a big difference for me uh, in Japan you know how it is it's a lot of things and yes. Poland is it's a bigger country than Norway right yeah <laughs> so uh, in Poland we have so many choices even in shops and stores and services everything mm -hmm. is like wow you can pick like from hundreds of teas what you prefer and all of this in Norway it's like I can tell you a story like three years ago, I decided to buy like a waffle machine for my husband. He, yeah. he, because waffles are a thing in Norway. Okay. So he really wanted to make waffles. And I was like, oh, I will buy him a waffle machine. This is so cool. And yes. I was so excited. I went to a store. I was like, oh, I will be picking waffle machine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll pick if I want this hard shapes or, uh, yeah. you know, square yeah. or whatever. Mini, I big. Yeah. yeah, right. And I was like super excited, circle or yeah. how did you know? Yeah. And I came there and there they had just one. One type. type. One type. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, is it possible? <laughs> uh of course I bought this one type and it took me that I didn't have this par uh choice paralysis as mm -hmm. we uh, often talk about in design. Yeah. Um. So sometimes I miss it here because the number of products that they have it's quite limited. Of course, you can order something online, but it's yeah. also in a limited, uh, you know, amount right. and mm -hmm. number. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the same when it comes. Another thing is when it comes to food. I mm -hmm. don't like Norwegian food. The Norwegian <laughs> food is just not. It's not. Not no no it's not very tasty. What is it? What is it like? Raw fish and salt. What is, what? Is it? <laughs> it's like uh, of course it depends probably like uh, every yeah. every yeah uh, mm. every person probably picks something different. We of course do our own cuisine whatever we prefer at home. But I'm I'm also talking more about what type of uh, products quality mm. they are and variety they offer in stores. It's not that many. Uh, Unless you talk about, for instance, they have this dry bread. I don't know, like it's uh, in the region is knekbre, uh, which is basically like this dry bread. Like uh, you can uh, in Poland, we also do have it, mm -hmm. uh, but this is just I think one one brand who sells this. Whereas yeah. in Norway, it's a thing, mm -hmm. so they have like you know a huge variety of those yeah, things. Cool. And I was like, yeah. wow, this is cool, so cool. Yeah. So I I learned how to eat it here. Mm -hmm. And another thing when it comes to a um, uh, variety of products and services is about everything connected with nature because as you as you know Norway is mostly uh the most interesting from this nature part the traveling mm -hmm. uh the views are amazing the fjords yeah. and mountains hiking uh picturesque. it's really really yeah very picturesque very beautiful gorgeous really mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they have a lot of uh items for uh trekking for hiking for mm -hmm. uh, camping <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah, it was yeah. an, an, another surprise i'm like you don't have so many yogurt or milk or whatsoever <laughs> but you have like i don't know thousand types of uh tents or uh, you know yeah. like some different like uh, gadgets for camping yeah. i'm like what yeah, the yeah. heck is this you know? yeah. priorities <laughs> priorities <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh, but they have also a good work-life balance, which I mm -hmm. always appreciated in every corporate, every workplace I work. I and I I work, worked in three companies here, mm -hmm. so I in every place I really appreciated this that they have a really good work-life balance and they respect your time off and your time okay. with family and all of this. So there's okay. no like ASAPs or mm -hmm. uh, you rush or something like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so it never happens that you went on a trip or uh, your weekend starts and they send you a message, oh my God, we need this by midnight or something like that. No, absolutely never happened. Never happened. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Because work can always wait and it always will be there. So yeah. interesting. Uh, do they have also like similar nine to five uh, work schedule? Do they work like five days a week? How is the work? Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, in uh, in Norway they work five days a week, uh, mm -hmm. and it's yeah, it's, it depends on the place. For instance, in the public sector, which yeah. is quite huge in Norway, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's a social country, as you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you want to be a full time employee, Norway is definitely a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is seven and a half hours per day, but mm -hmm. I worked in an, I worked in private companies, mm -hmm. so for me it was usually eight hours. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, but you know, you never uh, you didn't have to count it so much unless in consultancy I had to you know report hours and all of this. Yeah, to track. Uh, but, but yeah, to track. But it's common to work. It's like usually like eight to four or nine to five or mm -hmm. you know or. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. like classic European style, yeah. Okay, okay. I thought maybe they are different as well, but no, J Japan was a bit different. I worked then in two companies. The first one had five days work, whereas the second one had six yeah. days work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have only uh, heard and seen on TV about this, but uh, I mean, they wouldn't be there where they are if it was not for their hard work, I believe. So I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. But Japan actually is not uh, right now. I think they're a bit uh, behind. Oh, uh, some uh, yeah. Like, I mean, many people think that Japan is very developed in a sense of technology as well. That they're very innovative, mm -hmm. and I think it's not true anymore. Uh, I think it, China is much more developed when oh, it yeah, comes to sure. tech, uh, and uh, they're a little bit like. Uh, behind i also say something similar about norway in a, mm -hmm. because when i compare uh, from stories i had uh, from my husband's parents about norway when mm -hmm. of course in poland it was communism so it was a very different thing being in, yeah. in poland black and white, uh, yeah. yeah black and white totally different countries like you know mm -hmm. norway was so uh, so developed and so like much more uh in front of poland back then uh mm -hmm. yeah, in 90s but uh uh, in uh, right now, Norway is uh, Poland has uh, has been developing much more rapidly than Norway. And yeah. for me, Norway, when I of course I've been here just for years, so but I know a bit of history. I re read a lot, and I've had also. So I wouldn't say Norway is also progressing super quick. So it was mm -hmm. also something that I wouldn't expect. I was like, oh no, Scandinavia is generally <laughs> like so developed and so innovative, and and I'm no, I don't think Norway is this uh, and or Japan is. Uh, Mm -hmm. and the more super innovative no i don't think those countries are it's just yeah, yeah my observation i think uh, as, as long as you travel and see what is from the perspective of being uh not a citizen but just living there for a while you can gather resident much yeah yeah resident that's word. thank you you can yeah. see what what it the actual state is and everywhere is the same just with different filter on you know it's, yeah pretty much the same thing just a d different song you know so yeah it is what it is but let's see how many questions we have left <laughs> <laughs> do you have any uh freelance projects that were quite memorable for you and taught you a lot as a designer freelance okay when it comes to freelance of course i have uh one project that was not this I, I it was a graphic design project um mm -hmm. Uh, I felt uh, with uh, the contract and with payment uh, mm -hmm. and I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, get uh, my uh, uh, pay for this uh, mm -hmm. work uh, because I thought oh this is super quick we yeah we don't need a contract for this so we just yeah I can just do it in one week and we will wrap it up and then I they got uh, my work I didn't get the money <laughs> oh my god okay but, uh, I was I was young and stupid. Yeah, yeah. Did you know the client or was it something like you found online? No, no what's what's the ridiculous part of this is that I got this lead mm -hmm. from my ex colleague. Oh, okay. okay. So I thought, yeah, this is trustworthy. I mean, yeah. but Mm. you never know so but mm. I was it was like very my one of my first gigs I'd say mm -hmm. 
I also had some architecture gigs, uh, mm-hmm. but they went uh, pretty okay. I had one with my uh, one of my previous employee employers, uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, they I did it. They paid me. Everything was clear. We didn't like it was very clear uh, because I worked with them before full time, mm-hmm. so I kind of knew how they work. Okay. Uh, you know, we know each other. We knew each other, so it was easier. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to design wise, I remember uh, one project. Uh, with a startup uh, and one of my first and uh, I remember I think it was my one of my worst planning ever I still have problems sometimes with planning because projects are so different and Mm -hmm. you know uh, so I planned everything badly in a sense also like I undercharged my work definitely it was definitely too low pricing for this work that I had to do ultimately mm-hmm. uh, and I was uh, doing this on top of my full-time job oh my uh, God. okay and uh, yeah so it was uh, quite overwhelming and I was literally sitting at like 11 p.m on the weekends and then like every day working on this so I was I was crying on some days because I knew that I can't take a day off because the plan is just uh, not there no re- <laughs> yeah I didn't uh, plan this uh, I didn't put enough buffer time mm-hmm. for my uh, so the timing wise was uh, badly planned as well as the pricing was uh, also not the best mm-hmm. um, lesson learned lesson learned and of course there are some things like always communication wise this is always sometimes a problem in a sense mm-hmm. that you learn like if this is a new client mm-hmm. it's like even at, at work it's like you know you always need, always need to take some time to meet this person like in of a course. sense like get to get to know and it's Mm -hmm. you know learn how they communicate what they prefer because for instance you prepare systems for freelance clients like i know client hubs uh processes Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah not every client uh wants is and is eager to follow your processes even though that usually uh higher uh tickets clients appreciate that you have everything planned and they feel more secure yeah Uh, doesn't mean that they will provide you feedback in a place that you want them to provide for nope. instance nope. <laughs> so that was also quite a big learning for me because mm-hmm. I remember and it actually came to me quite later initially it was mostly on emails and then after mm-hmm. I, I I remember I did like a course I don't remember the name but mm-hmm. I was like oh yeah I need to have better systems so I created some hubs and I like planned like okay I will make a survey then it will be like this we will make this uh, loom recordings we will make those comments in Figma mm-hmm. then they didn't want to go to the comments in Figma oh, uh, you know God. and still were keeping everything in on emails so I think, and I accepted this because I think you need to be flexible. I mean, yeah, be flexible. And if they don't want this, then you just do whatever works. works. But you, for them, uh, mm-hmm. of course, for for you as well, you also have uh, you know you know you need to keep your uh, work uh, yeah. yeah and standards and everything so that mm-hmm. you can also do your work. Yeah. Uh, but it's actually interesting because you can plan a lot of different things. You mm-hmm. uh, you think I'm prepared, but yeah. then. People are just humans, right? Yes. The clients are just humans. So during the process, you learn. Okay, they this is that this doesn't work for them. Uh, mm-hmm. we need, I, I need to adapt and change. And okay, we will do it like this, or maybe hop on a call, or maybe do like this. You know, yeah. and you and it's of course a bit stressful sometimes, right? Because you're all yes. maybe they're dis- disappointed or they don't like my services, oh right? My oh my god, this this overthinking process in the back yeah. when you don't you, when you have too quick response or yeah. too late response or no response at all for one two days and like oh my god, they hate the suggestions and we are yes. not moving forward. They ghosted yes. me. <laughs> but- yes, exactly. Now I uh, remember uh, seeing on threads some uh, posts about um, lead generation and they asked like, do you prefer, um, no, how, what is the rate of your generating leads through DMs and through discovery calls? Have you ever generated a lead through DMs only? Yeah. Uh, No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) Uh, no, I have never, but I would love to try out more cold outreach, uh, just mm-hmm. to test it out. Uh, mm-hmm. Mostly uh, all my freelance clients were coming to me uh, through referrals. Yes. Uh, but uh, last month, uh, you know, I stopped for like last last year, I didn't do a lot of freelance work. I was mostly mm-hmm. focused on 
my full time started this uh, you know portfolio course uh, yeah. so maybe i will try it out and mm -hmm. see how it goes but mostly till now it was referrals yeah someone okay. you know or we worked together or someone yeah. worked with me and recommended me you know that's nice that's nice but always going through the discovery call and then starting the project yes 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 exactly okay that's nice and I have so many other questions, but we don't have time for that. I, <laughs> I have know, to let I you know. go. So I'm thinking, let let me ask you the questions from my followers that they asked. Yeah. But the first one was, they're just a couple. How does it feel to be a senior UX designer? How does it differ from being a mid UX designer? And you can tell us the difference between freelance and working full time as short yeah. as you can. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm so quite talkative, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, okay, so basically the first question, senior versus meet, uh, mm -hmm. depends on the company. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, and of course, when you are a freelancer, you can call yourself whatever. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be clear for your client and for your potential clients. I mm -hmm. even had a chat uh, with one of my friends this week, even mm -hmm. this or last. Uh, we're discussing should we call ourselves freelance uh, product designers or maybe should we call ourselves uh, fractional product designer because it's also a trend to call yourself fractional. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, but I told her, I mean, girly. Yeah. I just Google, uh, check Google <laughs> trend and see who actually Google and check fractional. Exactly. Literally, no one yet because it's you know there uh, there there is a time for early adopters and the uh, you know mainstream and all of this so if mm -hmm. you want to go to a mainstream and you just start out maybe it's better to call yourself freelancer because it's more common and people understand what freelancer mean exactly uh, so this is when it comes to freelance when it comes to the full-time senior versus meet it really depends on an organization when it comes mm -hmm. to the title mm -hmm. uh, you can call yourself whatever and uh, in one organization your title can be meet in another it can be senior in another junior doesn't mm -hmm. matter don't think about this but when it comes to skills yes. uh, there are there are of course differences right like the more mm -hmm. senior you are the more ambiguous and large projects and problems you can usually take on your plate mm -hmm. uh, usually you, you are getting more impactful with your work you definitely gained already more soft skills more mm -hmm. uh, stakeholders management skills mm -hmm. uh, and my question do you get more money <laughs> ah yeah good question <laughs> It depends. So, uh, for instance, you can get a promotion. Actually, I have a post prepared about I rejected once a senior uh, promotion to a senior designer in my oh, career. Stay tuned, guys. Uh, Check out yes, stay tuned. in the description. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, because they, did, they didn't offer me enough benefits, including oh, salary as well. There were a lot of yeah. different things. I will write about it in my post, so don't, don't, I won't go into details right now. But okay. uh, the title doesn't always come with uh, more money. Yeah, uh, but it usually it comes with, if you change the company. At least this was from from my yes. experience. It's yes. easier to get a, a different, better, like higher title and more salary if you change the organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you yeah, if you hope to another job, whereas in in internally it really depends. Uh, mm -hmm. You need to of course fight for it, but sometimes you can get a promotion, more responsibilities, but no salary or any other benefits. Okay. I have so many questions, but let's move on. <laughs> how uh, how to understand what developers are uh, talking about and what should I learn? Oh, that's a nice question. Yes. <laughs> uh, so basically, I saw one post yesterday on Instagram. Uh, oh, Jesus, I don't remember the name of uh, this person's account, but the guy is a UX researcher. Actually, he wrote about the mm -hmm. collaboration with developers. Mm -hmm. Basically, you need to talk with those dudes. That's simple yeah. as that. That's the first point. <laughs> uh, because, and how, I think the question was about understanding each other. So, um, yeah, yeah to, how to understand yeah. what they're talking about and what should I learn? <laughs> yeah, good question. So I think uh, of, uh, you need to learn their language a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. and it, it takes a bit of time um, I wouldn't be super like stressed about this because initially when I started I was also blind and on every stand-up call with developers yeah. or they were using all those words and it takes like like I don't know whatever and sometimes to till 
this day I sometimes have like a client or I work for a company and mm -hmm. I'm on a call and I don't know what they are talking about and I need to ask a lot of follow-up questions yes uh, unless I don't see a value in this and I, I I start realizing that okay I'm not needed here yeah uh, then, then I usually just okay guys I'm not needed here I'm you know yeah uh but uh, usually it's like try to uh, talk with them and mm -hmm. if you want to under you need to like ask question okay if they use and if they say something that you don't understand like mm -hmm. ask them okay can you explain it can you explain it to me in different words mm -hmm. uh because that's true that many developers uh do not uh, uh leave their buzzword uh wording and dictionary um mm -hmm. yeah Same for designers for <laughs> uh, but it's same for designers exactly so yeah. uh, you kind of don't have a different option than to uh, get into this world i think a bit of uh, learning about coding mm -hmm. uh to like basic stuff you can easily get but when it comes to other stuff you can hop on calls with developers about also different stuff like backend or some you know on stand-ups that you can don't understand everything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if you're interested and if this is needed for your collaboration it's about like communicating can you explain can you show me yeah uh, uh, how does it relate to design or how does it like how can I help and mm -hmm. basically talk these people are also humans so yeah. if you be brave enough to ask it uh, will go naturally yes yes I replied on the sticky note uh, of the question with first you have to understand what your company is doing and what languages they're using the frameworks and the vocabulary yeah. that they're using once you have the cheat sheet of the terms that they're using in the calls that you hear all the time and you don't understand then talk to them and ask them did you mean this in a simple language yeah another option i was thinking about like find a designer who speaks their language as well and ask for yeah. translation because that would be the easiest bridge between yeah the that's a good point yeah that's a good point you can ask your colleagues as well like designers yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah, do you know what this means like <laughs> yeah and just chat about it okay we reached the end and um let's see what are you currently reading oh good question um i actually finished recently entrepreneur revolution or something like this so it's mm -hmm. not a designy book yeah uh yes an entrepreneur revolution it's a book about yeah business basically running a business okay. so <laughs> okay and we have literally one minute um what do you want to be remembered for <gasps> that's a tricky question i know <laughs> uh i think um uh, yeah, I think just nice memories and that I was a uh, good, uh, when it comes to work, that I was a good, uh, valuable coworker. that I, uh, uh, I don't know, that I was kind and helpful and that I really aimed for the best. Okay, okay. Good answer, good answer. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You literally... Thank you for having me. Super fast and you, it, everything was so smooth and I... I couldn't wait to chat and this was the first time I was not nervous probably because it oh, was really? like, yeah because sometimes I have the script but the conversation might not go as planned yeah but here I didn't even need the script because you are yeah. so easy to talk to and thank you so much for saying yes and see you on the other podcast work in progress yes. very soon yes yeah, see you soon thank you so much for having me it was of a pleasure